Hello, and welcome to, uh, I think, our first proper follow-up episode of Ash and Dez Remember. Yep. We, we went through a big talk about our, our, our love for the Ghostbusters franchise, and we thought we would do a follow-up because we briefly touched upon the toys and the video games and the... The, the real Ghostbusters itself. A the little real bit Ghostbusters and the, more of the modern stuff. Basically, as Yogurt would say, merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. merchandising. So, Ash... It's going to sound like it for anybody that can see the camera. Do you remember the real Ghostbusters toy line? Um, yes, yes, Des, I do. Uh, I do remember it. And we talked last time about some of the things I had, like the, the plastic proton pack and the, yeah. the hologram zapper in the oh, nightclub. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, this video, this episode is, as always, going out on YouTube and on audio. So mm -hmm. um, we will talk a little bit about some of the toys. Yep. Uh, because I do have them behind me. And very recently, actually, mm -hmm. they re-released mm -hmm. the uh, original mold bases, mm -hmm. the toys based on the original mold of the 1980s real Ghostbusters toy line. Now, they weren't exactly 100% the same because fans like like myself uh, can obviously tell like the little differences, you know, like like the pegs on the back where the proton packs yeah. are, th little things like that. And colour will be off slightly as Colour's well, going to be different, differentiated a little bit, the plastic's going to be different, so on and so forth. But you know what, if you're somebody who grew up with that toy line, you're not really going to care about any of those type of things, are you? No, exactly. No. It's, it's about the nostalgia and exactly. also I don't remember enough about the original one's look. I mean, I know, I know the paint's going to be a little bit of a different colour because mm -hmm. it always is like the, the re-release of the Ninja Turtles or Hero Turtles the colour's slightly off yeah but the, the toys they're and... they are gorgeous and they do I, I, I also like Ash got these figures when they came out but unlike Ash I kept mine in my box and I actually for the first time ever got Perspex boxes oh wow so I could keep them in box basically I'm like that evil guy in Toy Story 2 Oh dear. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like that. Because I th these both summed up my childhood and things that I hated because I never got the original line. Did I always know? got like uh, spin-off ones. Like I remember getting Slimer with the Proton Pack. Oh, God. I remember getting a Lewis Tully. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember getting like the, the vampire one that we spoke about and the, the werewolf and things like that. But I didn't get any of the main line guys which are... So they, which are here now. I remember, like my friends on the school bus had these, and they would like spin the the proton stream and things like that. Yeah. So those, yeah. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit actually about those proton streams because those of you who haven't seen these toys before, um, if you're listening, do go and Google them yeah. and have a look at them. We'll leave a link in the description so you can see them. But they've got um, the little neutrino wand, which just hooks on their hand, and they've got yep. the the proton pack. But then they've got these kind of twisted plastic streams yeah. that go through them. Mm -hmm. And at the back, you've got a little little handle where you can twizzle them around. So it basically um, looks like the, the stream is firing, which, yeah. is, which is a brilliant idea. But like, when I, don't know if you, I don't know if you can hear yeah, this. Hear That's nostalgia you're listening to, people. That's yeah. You're See, the thing is, is that when you get that, and the first time you get it, you think, That's brilliant. That's great. Look, I can fire a stream. And then when you get like a little bit, not older, but like the longer you have it, you think, this is really annoying. It just doesn't look great. And what do you do? You snap it you off. You snap it off. And then it just doesn't look right like at Ever all. again. And I don't understand why these didn't come detachable. Like you'd think they would come detachable. That they can just slip in and click in, but they yeah, didn't. They didn't do that. I mean, surely it's more work mm -hmm. to put them in than it is to just have them separate. Yeah. You would think that. I mean, essentially, it is just a long piece of plastic. You should be able to just, like, slip it in, twiddle it about the place, and then pop it right back out, and then everything would be 100% fine and hunky-dory. I knew you were going to make that face, Ash. Um, <laughs> but on, if... on that topic, you get little you get little ghosts with each of them. That's right, yeah. And um, I got Egon. He arrived today from the States because he was difficult to get in the UK. So, my, yeah. like I mentioned in the last episode, my in-laws kind of sorted him out for me. But the ghost that comes with him, um, again, you're going to have to Google this to check this one out because he looks a little bit like a condom. Oh, God, yeah, he does. Because I didn't realise that the advert showed me that they slip over uh, the head. I mean, the condom one does fit over the head. Yeah, but the others don't, do they? Well, they don't because yeah. if we take Peter's, yeah. Peter's doesn't even have a hole. 
No, it doesn't. It's just each of them had like a little gimmick or something. So like this one probably like hung off Peter's arm or something like that. It was weird. But every one of them had like a spe- specific unique ghost that would work specifically for that Ghostbuster. So the more you collected, even though if you get a Ghostbuster, you don't have to get like a slime or, or a Stay Puft. They would come with a little ghost that you can bust. Um, the only thing it didn't come with was a ghost trap. Yeah, that was, all, that was always yeah. weird. You don't need a ghost trap because the main thing is uh, busty, busty, uh, zappy, zappy, busty yeah. makes me feel goody. Um, There's so many innuendos, aren't there? They just really are. Of course there is, but that's the whole point of this type of franchise. Um, and obviously, when with this, you get like the spin-off things, and like we mentioned previously, there's the backpack to... comes off by just coming. It's it the just... backpacks just sticks into a hole on the back. Yeah, which means that when you take it off, the straps are still on, and it just looks kind of weird and blah 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 blah. But then you you look at the the, the toys back then, and then you look at something like this now. This is. What I'm showing now, everybody, is that this is from the few years ago. I think this was like 2017, 2018. This is the Winston Zeddemore uh, figure that came from uh, Diamond Select Toys, which are like really high-end toys. And I have the full series of this because I want every uh, piece came with like a uh, bit that you put together and it to re- make the rooftop to make the, the gozer temple I kind of hate it when toy companies do that I know because there was a DC one where you could build like a super Lex Luthor yeah. and bits came in different packs but it was like one of them came in with Gotham by Gaslight Batman great yeah. one came with Wonder Woman fine one came with the ray it's like oh right I, I don't want the ray yeah the and most annoying thing about this was is that they had like brilliant ones they had like a lewis tully mm-hmm. they had like a dna they had walter peck they had a demon ghost but they also released two versions of peter venkman and two versions of ray oh so you had like regular peter venkman which looks just like regular and then a slimed one and then a slimed one and then you have like regular ray and then you have clocking off ray which was essentially exactly the same except his flight suit was open oh yeah capitalism exactly well true i mean to be fair des did you buy them of course i did (laughs) yeah because i had to complete my set but when you look at the these figures now they are so detailed they are gorgeously detailed everything about the proton pack is right the neutron one looks like every um head sculpt looks just like every character from yeah. so i don't know if everybody can see this and if you're listening to this on audio eh, you're not going to see this is that i'm holding the winston zeddemore figurine here and it looks exactly like ernie hudson it does circa 1984 um, Even the detail on the clothing, like the the, the ripples in the clothing, the ripples, in the yeah, the ripples in that, uh, in everything. You can even see the outline of like pockets and zips that would be yeah. in the flight suits. It's it's a really beautiful attention to detail, and this came out like a few years ago. So all we had when we were growing up was the stuff from the real Ghostbusters. I mean, yeah, you could get a proton pack and you could get a... Uh, Am I right? Did, we didn't even have toys from the actual films. It was no, just the real Ghostbusters. It, because they couldn't get licensing rates. Oh. For the car- and they didn't know that the film was going to be as big <coughs> as it was. So when well, even it, then, later we didn't. When Ghostbusters yeah. 2 came out, well, Ghostbusters I don't came, remember us actually getting figures for Ghostbusters we 2. We didn't. All that we got was uh, stuff tailored around Ghostbusters 2 in the real Ghostbusters universe. So you had an Ecto-1A, but it was just a recast of Ecto-1 from real right. Ghostbusters. They had like this brilliant comic book series, uh, which was the real Ghostbusters star in Ghostbusters 2, which oh, essentially wow. told the story of Ghostbusters 2, but using the character models from the animated series. Oh, that's clever. And they, and they actually contains one deleted scene that was supposed to appear in the film but didn't and they repurposed it in the montage of when Ray gets possessed by Vigo when he's driving Ecto-1. Oh. Yeah. You get to see that scene in the comic book series and they, they split the footage up for the montage in the film and for the Coke advert oh, wow. uh, for Ghostbusters 2. You get to see snippets of Ray possessed by Vigo driving wildly around New York in Ecto-1. I don't remember that at all. There you go. Um... So with the toys, Mm -hmm. obviously the toy world also leads through Mm -hmm. into video games. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of Ghostbusters video games. Was there in the 90s, Mm -hmm. because it has been since, but in the 90s, the 80s and 90s, was there actually ever a good Ghostbusters game? Oh, God, no. Well, yes. Actually, go on. Which one? closely was, was there was one for the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, 
if you remember this. You don't use the actual neutrino one, do you? It kind of shoots out different yeah, things, you like plates a, and things. I remember that. Yeah, yeah that was... It, it was essentially a mixture of, like, Three Stooges graphics yeah. with... Com, uh, with I was going to say Commando, but is it Commando? No, it's uh, Contra. Contra. Well, Contra style graphics where you, you uh, hurt a ghost enough and then you're able to zap and trap it. Yeah, I'm... Yeah. I played that recently. I'm, again, I'm not really a fan. Because it's not really anything to do with Ghostbusters. It's and not. anything to do with Ghostbusters. Like the first one where you... you The one that came out for like... The, the NES when the, you're just driving around from place to place. You're not and, even driving around. You're, you're the no ghost logo going around oh a God, square yes. gridded map uh, to try and stop the Zool building. Oh God! But yes. it wasn't the Zool <laughs> building. It's the Gozer Temple. It's fifty-five Central Park West, and it's in the center of Manhattan when it should be near a gigantic. Well, it should be literally right next door to Central Park. How was it so hard to make a good Ghostbusters game? Because it's just there. It it's is there. You just run around zapping and capturing ghosts. How, how do you screw that up? How do you put that across in video games? Or consoles from 1984. I mean, to be fair, the one, the Mega Drive one you talk about mm. was very, very close to being a good Ghostbusters game, but it mm. just, it, it, it just still failed. It still fell a little bit short because it made too many changes to what the characters did, yep. what they could do, what they interacted with, mm -hmm. and you know, it just, it, it, you could have made it using just a basic shooter setup. Yeah. Um. But did, they just did, tried. Did. They tried to change it up so much, and in doing so, mm -hmm. they failed to make a good Ghostbusters game in the eighties and nineties. They did, however, in my opinion, did have a semi decent one, which was Ghostbusters Two for the Game Boy. Never played that one. You never played that one. No, I don't. Essentially, know. it's it, you're like a, it's a top down shooter where you ha where you choose two Ghostbusters. And, oh. it, and it follows the lore of Ghostbusting, which is that one person zaps and the other traps. Oh, that's good. So, like, one instantly follows around you like this. Yeah, like this on an, on a, on an audio uh, podcast. podcast. It, it, they go like this, and then they do this. Oh, right, that. It, that yeah. yeah. So, essentially, you've got, like, two ghost, Ghostbusters, and they follow each other. Uh, one will go up to an enemy and zap them, and then the one behind throws out the trap, captures them, and, th and drags it back in so that they're just clearing out rooms. I didn't play that. You should check it out. I do remember the, I'm pretty sure it was the one on the Commodore. And it was probably one that appeared on different systems as well because they get ported over. But I do remember it. And I mentioned of this. I mentioned one? that it was Ghostbusters 2. Ghostbusters 2, right. And I right. mentioned this on the last time we talked about Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. And it's when you're going down what is probably the most, one of the most famous scenes of the Ghostbusters 2. Where Ray is going down. Down the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. And I just remember not getting very far because you couldn't touch the sides. You couldn't swing too far. Yeah. There were things there that could hurt you. And I remember just not getting very far in it. And this was yeah. the time when you really put effort into a game because you had that game and you'd bought that game or your parents had bought that game. So you had to focus on it. Yeah. Whereas now it's very, very disposable. Like you can get, I've got the Mega Drive collection. There's like 60 games on it. It's like, if I'm going to play two or three of these, fine. Yeah. And just... Eh, whatever. Yeah, exactly. But the the Ghostbusters games of the eighties and nineties pale in comparison <laughs> to to the one that a lot of people consider to be Ghostbusters three. Myself and and I think that is fair. Yep. It is called simply Ghostbusters the video game. Released and in two thousand and nine. Was it that long ago? It was. Yeah, it released in June of two thousand and nine. I remember this vividly because I was on a building site at the time. And I had downloaded and was constantly re-watching the trailer on my iPod video. Oh, wow. On the little tiny screen, any break that I could, I remember constantly re-watching it. And everything about it just instantly felt like Ghostbusters. One, yeah. was written by Dan Aykroyd and Howard Ramis. Two, it got everybody back together. It got Bill Murray phoning in his performance something fierce I mean I'm going to be honest I've never really rated Bill Murray's acting prowess anyway so I yep. didn't notice anything yep. that's the reason why a scene was cut I'm going to come back to this in a minute right it got Bill Murray Dan Aykroyd Harold Ramis Ernie Hudson William Atherton it got Annie Potts Annie Potts it got uh, well he was in the films but he didn't really do much in it it got uh Brian Doyle Murray Brian, was Thank back. you, Brian Doyle Murray back as as the mayor, but in Ghostbusters two he played the, the psychiatrist, psychiatrist yeah. that locked up the Ghostbusters in Ghostbusters two. You didn't he that. have Didn't he have two roles in Ghostbusters two? 
Wasn't there? A, didn't he play something else, or was it Ghostbusters? Uh, he's played basically any film Bill Murray's in. His brothers are his somewhere brothers, there. Yeah, will make an appearance in some way, shape, or form. I actually don't know if he makes an appearance other than well, obviously we now say that he's in Ghostbusters two and he's in Ghostbusters the video game. So maybe he does appear in Ghostbusters one, and we just don't realize that. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, you you said there's something you wanted to come back to. Mm-hmm. There is a deleted scene from the game. From the game, a deleted level. Go on. Yeah. It is the parade level. You see snippets of it in trailers where one of the parade balloons comes alive. Do you remember this? Yeah. Yeah. There was an entire level where the Ghostbusters uh, arrive at a parade. I think it was like a New Year, not New Year's, uh, like a Thanksgiving parade. Wait, don't you see that in the game though? No. They take those out. You see a snippet of it in the news report at the end. Was it in the remastered release? Nope. Because I, I swear. You, some hackers. Or was that Crash Bandicoot? Very Crash. It might be Crash Bandicoot yeah. Four. Yes, it was. Uh, so there's an entire deleted level, and there is snippets of it that fans have been able to find and recreate through uh, the in-game code of. Uh, Ghostbusters the video game uh, uh, there will be video footage of it on YouTube and the main reason why it doesn't exist, exist was for two reasons Okay, one, the level was like 95% complete but it wasn't really that fun so they decided to take it out but okay. two Bill Murray didn't record all his lines and so they couldn't proceed with the Fuck level sake. Yeah, and it's so bizarre, essentially uh, this is going to be oddly specific, but I want to see if I can tell you this. There's a scene in the museum where yeah. the mayor just comes down and just goes, can anybody tell me why my library, museum, and parade are all going down the toilet? And William uh, Walter Peck is there. And the guys talk about uh, how one dimension is crossing over into yeah. another. And Peter talks about uh, cockroaches the size of polo ponies and things like that. You yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That scene took place under a bleachers in the parade scene that was the ah. setup to that scene they just stripped out the characters and the voices and put it into the museum level cool so there you go little yeah, bit of I, information for you i like that game i think it's the right length it is the perfect length there is some incredibly annoying parts in that game. try slime tethering oh Jeez, the slime tethering of those little bastarding cherub cherub, cherub things. things but i still love it and the main reason why I love it is because everybody is back, which yeah. means that I got to hear Harold Ramis back. One last time. One last time as Egon Spangler. And it is pitch perfect. It is just yeah. tonally perfect. Yeah. Yep. And it it is set at the right time mm-hmm. and is very much Ghostbusters 3. Because they don't, they don't try to modernize it. The game is set in 1991, which is two years after Ghostbusters 2. They make some references to Ghostbusters 2. Um, I'm intrigued to see if they make any reference to it in Ghostbusters Afterlife. I very much doubt that they will. That would be nice. It would be be, really I, would love just, nice. I would love Winston just to come in near the end to give some advice to the new kids. Mm-hmm. You should try slime tethering. <laughs> Or he just mentions the kid that opened up a franchise in Chicago. Because yeah. that's referenced at the end. And that was in canon because that was referenced in uh, the, the ADW comic book series yeah. as well. It's though it's those little things that, that I love. And I now incorporate many of those things now into my own Proton Pack. Because there's many fan builds out there. And I recently put in a light and sound kit. Which has all the sound effects from the Ghostbusters video game in there. Which means that I can slime tether yeah. i can fire my meson collider i can fire my stasis stream and so on and so forth and if anybody is confused by that i'm sorry i lost you yeah yeah it's the the uh ghostbusters video game is great go check it's it out so good you can get it on all what it was well, all modern, all, yeah, all, yeah. I've, remastered one is the one i've got you mm-hmm. can get them all on on modern consoles yeah really really good game absolutely great fun it is um i i think that is one of the best things Video game wise, that Ghostbusters did. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd agree with you. And back to the kind of the nineties, which is where our era really is. Yeah. Um, there wasn't a great number of video games, mm-hmm. but what we did have was the one thing that I think got pretty much everyone into Ghostbusters, and that was, of course, the real Ghostbusters, yes. which we haven't really talked about. We, we kind of yeah. skirted around it, and not we've kind of mentioned it here and there. Yeah. 
But we haven't really talked about the real Ghostbusters mm -hmm. as an entity. And that was one of the best shows growing up as a kid. I loved it. It's it's good up until season three. Is that when they became Slimer in the real Ghostbusters? It was around about season three or season four. They, they took this brilliant idea of the first few seasons of Ghostbusters was kind of like the, of the, sorry, the real Ghostbusters was kind of like the film, which that it had real scary horror type elements to it. But the Ghostbusters were kind of lighthearted and would always do you through it. And then they came up with a brilliant idea to make it extremely more kid friendly. So it became Slimer and the real Ghostbusters because Slimer became like a standout character in it. And then they decided to desexify Janine because. Yeah, yeah, has it. There was a complaint that she was too sexy. She was, yeah, she was far too sexy. So they changed her design. And more importantly, they changed her voice actor, which makes no sense because Laura Sommer is brilliant as Janine. Um, you're you're going to be you're going to be meeting her soon. Uh, hopefully, you? if all goes well, I will be hosting uh, ExtraCon Glasgow, which will be happening in Glasgow next year, uh, twenty twenty two. I really hope to get to that. Uh, I hope you are too. And Laura Sommer will be there, and I hope to talk to her about all of this. I have a lot of questions for, her. Uh, but more than anything else. The real Ghostbusters is just a brilliant spin-off to this series because it continued on the story and it directly in at least two episodes. Two episodes. two episodes directly reference on our set directly after the two movies. Yeah, one of them, uh, Citizen Citizen Ghost, takes place immediately after Ghostbusters 1. And you find out why their uniforms are different colours in uh, the series. Exactly, yeah. And there is another one, uh, Brothers in Slime. I can't believe I remember that. Brothers in Slime that happened later on, which references uh, Vigo from Ghostbusters 2. And they do make little references uh, throughout the series like I think there was one episode about the adventures of Murray the Mantis where like uh, uh, New Year's Day no I keep saying this uh, a Thanksgiving uh, Day parade blimp uh, comes to life and becomes like a gigantic mantis called obviously Murray the Mantis and I think at one point if somebody was describing how powerful this would be and then Winston said no it just goes great another big Twinkie <laughs> which references what he says in Ghostbusters. So it's those little things that happen through it. It's, a, it's just a brilliantly done 80s Saturday morning cartoon show. And you can easily get it. Fans have, um, I love this, German fans have been able to get um, SD copies of it onto Blu-ray discs. So you can get like all five five seasons six seasons sorry six seasons all on blu-ray discs uh, and they all are in english they're just not super high def they're standard definition but they're all out there and it's like 40 or 50 quid on yeah, amazon you can't get the full season series. you can get them in america you can get the full seasons in america and you can get them in beautiful box sets and so on and so forth here in uh, in the uk first season and that's it First that season, weird. first season on DVD, and that's it. If you want to get the entire season, you've either got to uh, find them on like Amazon or Hulu or wherever. All these they used to be on Netflix, and then they took them off. Why though? Do you, do you know why? I have no idea. There's fans out here that would easily lap that up. I would lap that up. Yeah. But you can get like uh, the full season on DVD, or you can get like random episode collections. Yeah. Which I remember getting on like uh, VHS. You know, adventures in, or something. Yeah, adventures in slime and space, uh, things things like that. And there's some brilliant horror based episodes in there, uh, like Mrs. Robertson's uh, Neighborhood mm -hmm. with the ghost What is a brilliant, creepy episode. I remember that. Yes, <coughs> it finally addresses the episode of the Boogeyman, mm -hmm. which nobody thought to talk attack on the Boogeyman, but they did, and. Um, but it's it's just a really fun, brilliant show. Mm. If there's any non-Ghostbuster fans out there, I hope you take this as an incentive to watch this and give it yeah. a try. We should. You know, watch the films, watch the cartoon show, play the video games. Just not any from the 80s and 90s. <laughs> play the modern video game. And when I say modern video game, look for one specifically called Ghostbusters, the video game. Not, not, not the one not. that, that um, we found in a shop a while ago that yeah. looks like Ghostbusters. But it's um, the 2016 Ghostbusters. Yeah, and when we bought it, it was like, okay, not play this. Interesting. Opened it up, and it was actually the the actual Ghostbusters of the video game. Oh, thank God the, for the that. The 2009 one. It's like, oh, oh that okay. was lucky. That was that was, that was yeah, lucky. That was lucky. Yeah, 
And we've, again, I want to stress this enough, this has got nothing to do with our dislike or hatred of the 2016 movie or the fact that there's... Because there's, for me, there's not a hatred. And again, we no. will discuss that later. We're going to discuss this, but we... we I grew, just wasn't a huge fan. That yeah. was it. That was it. And we're going to do like a little breakdown of that because I want to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, because I think there's been a lot of negativity about it. Yeah. A lot of misogyny and sexism. Yeah, oh, and, and to I, hell with that. Yeah, I yeah. just, I went into it really excited and wanting to enjoy it and just... Wasn't my wasn't a movie no, for me. wasn't no. made wasn't made for me, and that's totally fine. It's going to be a short episode on that one, and we hope you come or stick around for that. Yeah, not everything has to be for you, even if it's part of a franchise. You exactly, love. exactly. Deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Internet, deal with it. Um, I th- I think we've kind of addressed everything here. Obviously, there's going to be like a load more oh, of yeah. merchandise with Ghostbusters Afterlife coming out. I'm sure we'll talk about that. And I remember when I was younger having... Do you remember those little um, fake candy cigarettes you used to have? That's right, yes. I had Ghostbusters ones of those. That's right, because if you want to get into smoking, smoke with Egon. That was weird. <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> Why did... Candy what? cigarettes. Candy kids, cigarettes. What the fuck? No, so, well, it was 80s. It was a different time. Yeah. Yep. Um... Thank you. I think we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, here. Yeah, so, so thank you, everybody, for allowing myself and Ash to indulge in our Ghostbuster lovey vent thingy, which is great. Uh, we do hope you've enjoyed this episode. We do have many more episodes out there which deal with the Ghostbusters and pop culture from the 80s and 90s uh, it's almost like we're doing an entire podcast about that I know it's amazing <laughs> uh, we do hope you check them out uh, if you have enjoyed this episode tell us what's the, the most nostalgic thing you remember about the Ghostbusters what's your favourite real Ghostbusters episode oh that's a good one that's a really good one do you like uh, did you like uh, how Peter was voiced in the original series before his voice got changed over as well any of those things let us know we want to uh interact with your uh, nerdiness out there uh, I think we're on a lot of the social medias Facebook yeah. Instagram if they're working because as we're, the day we're recording this <laughs> Facebook Insta WhatsApp have all gone down and that's going to date this episode as well yeah. so they've gone down like that ghosted on Ray in Ghostbusters 1 ba dum dum I really hoped that this is two episodes we did on Ghostbusters I honestly thought we were going to get away with the Ray job ghost blow job <laughs> Ray job ghost blow job yes exactly <laughs> Ray job ghost uh, uh, yes uh, but we yeah didn't. so ectoplasm ect- everywhere oh god <laughs> anyway anyway so thanks for watching I've been Desert Gorman I've been Ash Price and remember don't cross the streams keep it geeky bye for now